And here we are, standing in our satellite facility, the new Center for Military Arts in the village of West Greenville. And we're celebrating this evening the opening of this facility. What many of you may not know is that actually in 2013 marks the 40th anniversary of our Master of Arts degree at Clemson University. Quite an accomplishment, I would call <laughs> But I can think of no better way to celebrate this. Our accomplishments, the hard work of the art department, our faculty, the recognize the accomplishment of our local Greenville artists, and then talking about our very first MFA graduate, Jeanette Dreskin, who is here with us this evening. <laughs> and in fact, if you want to see more of Jeanette's work, come to Clemson. We're going to have a show of hers in Lee Gallery in the spring. And you can also look for an ad that comes to the World Magazine. So as you look around you tonight, you're probably thinking, you know, you're standing in a gallery. But it's not just that. This is a project space. Okay, you go, Greg, what's a project space? All right. It's a venue for installations. It's a venue for exhibitions and works in progress. It's a place that takes risks. It's a place we're going to experiment, function, to develop new works. And at other times, we'll be launching for community, for community engagement, going out and finding out who's there. In fact, some of the artists we have with us this evening are MFA alumni who are all currently teaching at high schools and colleges in the upstate. Through their teaching and their art, they give back to the community and to us what they've learned at Clemson. But so I always talk about hub and spoke notions of how Clemson is a hub, and we have Greenville as our second home, we come in about four, back and forth. And I'm going to talk about these artists' behaviors to you later in the evening. But at this moment, I'd like to recognize Jim and Marsha Barker. <clears throat> President and Mrs. Barker are longtime members of the Princeton Center of Visual Arts. In fact, they became founding members of the CBA back in 1999 when the program was established. Mrs. Barker is not only a founding member of the CBA, but she also continues to serve on our board of directors for the CBA Celebration and Fundraising Planning Committee. And she's pretty good at helping us recruit people into the board, too, as you may have known. Many of you here know that, and how good she is. And we thank Mark as well as our current and former board members who are here with us this evening. And also, I want to say that, you know, having a president who gets the arts, when I first met Jim, I thought, here's a guy who actually understands the arts from the inside out. And he's really exceptional at cultivating the arts. And he gets the fact the arts are key to communication skills, critical thinking, and cultural awareness. And we always say our CBA mission is to engage and render visible the creative process. When you think of our mission, you think of Jim Barker and his tenure at Clemson, I think they really mirror each other. The creative process is alive and well. President Barker has encouraged the growth of the arts on our campus in so many ways. But I think and thank the support, he embraces, in fact, current and ongoing developments in our program, like our creative inquiry class at Tellier Insights Green Public Art Tour campus, in fact, has become part of the campus master plan. So that not only what happens this year, it goes on for eons and hopefully makes a current impact in our campus. And all these developments, what they're bringing forward, actually I argue this like quite a bit, that Thomas Green Clemson had an implicit vision of the arts as integrated in the very fabric of the campus. And you're thinking, wait a minute, didn't he start a te agricultural technical college? <laughs> well actually, you know, President Barker's background is in architecture. He's an artist as well, he's an accomplished painter himself, he draws. And he follows in the footsteps of their accomplished painter, Thomas Green Clemson, our founder. And you may not think of Thomas Green Clemson as a, as a painter or an artist, but he really was an accomplished advocate. He was charged to fair in Belgium. He collected art avidly. And he brought it home to Fort Hill, the center of our campus. And he mandated that Fort Hill be a place where his art collection stay forever. And so that really speaks to the fact that the arts are a dedicated part of the great core of our campus. In fact, in 1859, he addressed the Walking Art Association. And he said, quote, art is the magic bond that unites all nations. Pretty impressive stuff. It's stuff you would have Richard Ford in today, but this is back in 1859. So I would argue, from Thomas Green Clemson to James Fraser Barker, the art and artists of the campus are part of Clemson's DNA. So please, help me give a warm welcome to President Jim Barker. Tell you how excited Marcia and I are to be here. This is our first visit to this satellite center for the visual arts, um, and, and part of this this village uh, that we're we're gathered here to be uh, to celebrate tonight. But I'm very excited about what we see around us. This is a wonderful room in here, and I can see it for multiple purposes, both for all sorts of demonstrations as well as gallery shows and so forth. Uh, but it is. Um, it's, it's a reason for us to come and celebrate, clearly. 
Uh, so let me welcome you officially to Clemson and Greenville as we're trying to slowly make Greenville into Orangeville. And we're making a... <laughs> <laughs> I'll go through a little bit of this in just a second of all the places that Clemson has recently arrived in to help uh, build a much stronger bond between Clemson and Greenville. But this new Center for the Visual Arts is our satellite. It's nestled here among 40 shops, uh, restaurants, and galleries. We're starting to get a critical mass in this part of town, and we hope we can contribute to that, pump some energy, additional energy here. If you involve our students, I guarantee you that's what we'll hope to do. So we're just excited about being a part of that. Uh, a decade ago, um, the work by Dreamer leaders that produced a remarkable place, and it's truly a beautiful thing to see. And it's one more example of, from my perspective, of why Greenville is one of America's finest cities. I'm not exaggerating when I say that. I, I have found very few, if any, cities that can match the vitality, civic spirit, entrepreneurship of Greenville, South Carolina. And if, if Clemson is our hometown, we are claiming Greenville as our home city. And I hope you will hope you'll understand why we want to do that. There are 13,000 alumni that live in Greenville. There are 2,500 current students studying at the Clemson campus from Greenville. 500 of our faculty and staff live in Greenville. So this is an important component to uh, Clemson's future. Recently, you may be aware that we have linked the two cities with a transit system. Greenlink and our Clemson Area Transit have formed a collaboration. And two weeks ago, we started this route between our campus and several locations here in Greenville that will uh, connect the two communities in a much stronger way. It's Wi-Fi connected, it's, uh, it leaves every hour, and it's the opportunity to, instead of driving to work, you can get a lot of work done between here and there, going back and forth. And it's, a, it's an exciting new connection in that transit system. Our five Clemson sites then include the CUI car, probably the first of all these, and its presence on I-85 in Greenville is helping re revitalize, re-energize, establish uh, truly the research component of an automotive cluster in South Carolina, located strategically between Michelin and, and, uh, and BMW. The second is our bioengineering laboratories that have been created as part of Greenville Hospital on the Pelham uh, campus there. It is a, a, an excellent laboratory. It's hard to find one better where Greenville Hospital clinicians and surgeons are working right alongside our faculty and students, undergraduate and graduate, to produce great new ideas of how to keep us going in our, uh, in our time. Uh, and you probably know that Clemson invented what became known as the Clemson hip, and the Queen Mother of England had two Clemson hips. <laughs> our third pres presence currently is Greenville at Falls, where our graduate business programs are located. They will soon move in January to Project One at the corner of Maine and Washington in downtown Greenville. Uh, they will contain our MBA programs, all of our graduate programs in business, our Masters of Real Estate Development, which is collaboration between uh, planning and, uh, and the business school. Uh, and our traditional uh, strong presence at the University Center where our uh, education and nursing programs have their graduate uh, programs there. So as you start to see, um, this, this link between Clemson and Greenville is a very important part of us. Greg mentioned Thomas Green Clemson, and every great idea I think we've had, he already had in the 19th century. Uh, but when, when he says he was a painter, he was not an ordinary painter. I mean, his portrait painting was excellent. I couldn't, I couldn't begin to do what he did. Uh, a terrific musician, uh, composed music as well. So we have truly a renaissance man as our founder of our university. So the arts are a very important part of not only what we see of our history, but also of our future. There's some people I want to say thank you, official thank yous to at this gathering. Uh, Richard and Gwen Heisel, um, they helped us secure this space. They have been tremendous supporters of Clemson in several different forms. We thank them. Uh, they're not going to be with us tonight, but we, I want you to know that they were a vital part of this effort. Uh, our Community Foundation of Greenville uh, contributed uh, a grant of $100,000 to help make this space uh, come to life in the way you see it now. Uh, that's, that's been a very important 
a component of that. And I'll call on, on uh, them in just a moment to come forward. And also the board for the Center for Visual Arts. And, and my favorite board member, Marshall. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's been a part of this from the very beginning. And she never lets me forget, oh, I wouldn't anyway, but she never lets me forget how important this work is. And the pride that she sees in that's being built as a part of the Center for Visual Arts and this new satellite campus is very real and, and very important to us. Um, let me ask then if, uh, if Bob, if you come forward, Bob Moss, and your board chairman, we have uh, a book here for you, Jerry Real, uh, who's Mr. Clemson in every single way, wrote the definitive history of Clemson University. And it's actually fun to read. This will not be the one. <laughs> uh, it's called the High Seminary, because that was a phrase from Thomas Green Clemson's will. That was what we were intended to be. You can't be a high seminary without the arts. Uh, we'd like for you to have a copy of both Volume 1 and Volume 2, with our appreciation for your, your help and uh, all of your work. Thank you, Eric, very much. Those of us who are gathered here tonight will, many years in the future, say, I was there when this started. That's a fun thing to do. I was there when it started, and I think that's a reason to celebrate. So let's do that. Go Tigers. Thank you. <laughs>